All right, now that our corrections are made, we can move on to the final version of the note-taking app. In this version, we'd like to have a little more specificity as to when the notes were created. So you know what is most recent or least recent based on when you added the note to your app. So whenever I type a note into my app, I'm going to not only record what the note was, but also give it a timestamp. So in order to demonstrate this first, I'm going to clear out all of my notes so that we can have a clean slate to work with. We're basically going to not only record notes, but we're also going to record the time at which the note was created. So I'm going to have a parallel list called times, and it is also going to be a empty list when the app begins. Now, if you've taken honors computer programming, you might know that another way to store this data would be a two-dimensional list, but that's beyond the scope of this course. So we're just going to keep two separate lists that are parallel to each other. That means that the first note corresponds with the first time. The second note corresponds with the second time. And so our index numbers of the first index corresponds to the first time, second index to the second time, and so on. So we have two things to change. We first need to add, when we add a note, not only do we need to add to the list called global notes, but we'll duplicate this. And we also need to add to the time. So what does it mean to add to the time? Well, we're, we need to add a time to the times list. In order to add a time, we need to go to our clock and we need to get whatever time it is now. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to look for the now feature. And generally they're listed alphabetically, although I do not see it yet. Here it comes. There it is. So I'm going to grab this now and I'm just going to stick it out here because it needs to hook in. If I put this right in here, the now feature has a lot of data with it. It has the time, uh, the seconds, the minutes, the hour, the day of the week. It has um, the actual date, all of that information. We only want a specific part of the timestamp. So what we're going to do is we're going to format that. So I'm going to go back to my clock and I'm going to look for a formatter. Again, looking alphabetically for a format. And there are three options here. Do I want just the day, month, year? Do I want um, something with the seconds and the hours? I'm just going to go with this specific instance. So I'm going to put that as my item and I'm going to store in my times list the formatted time of whatever time it is now instead of all of the data. Great. Now in addition to storing it in the list, anytime we store something in the list, we also need to update our database. So I'm going to duplicate this because the code is nearly the same. Okay, And now I'm adding a new piece of data to the database. So I'm just going to conveniently tag instead of notes, I'm going to tag it as times. And I'm going to store my list of times under a tag called times. So that is fully updated. Similarly, if I remove something from the list, I'm not only going to remove, remove the note, but I'm also going to remove the time. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this and change this to global times. And it grabbed the item that was selected 
and we're going to remove that item index from the global times as well. And just as we did before, we are going to update our database. So we'll just also change the times and store the new list of times. Now that we have removed that particular time from the list, we're going to store that list of times to the database as we did before. Now, while we have made changes to our lists and our persistent data in the database, our output list procedure isn't changing. So right now, when we view the screen and test this app, it won't look any different than it did before. The times are saving in the computer's memory in both a list and persistently on the device, but when we output, we need those changes to be reflected in the output here in our current notes. So we still need to write that code. All right, so in modifying our output list procedure, we eventually will output to our label that we developed but we can't use this nifty little function we were using before because we would only be outputting our notes. And we want to output the note, and right next to that note, we want to output the associated time. So I'm gonna delete this block, and I'm gonna keep this code here because we're gonna use it eventually, but instead, we need to think about what it means to output the list. Well. We can't output the list if there are no notes. So I'm going to first check to see if either list is empty. So I'm going to say, I'm looking for, is a list empty? So if which list, it doesn't matter which list. So I'm just going to go up and grab a list. So if our notes list is empty, okay? then we don't want to do anything, but we want to do something if it's not empty. So I'm going to go to my logic. I'm going to grab a not block. And now I want to move into an if statement. So if the list is not empty. So I'll go to control and I'll pull out an if block and I'll pop it into the top of my function and grab my not statement. So if the list is not empty, what do we want to do? Well, we want to develop some output. Now, traditionally, when we use a variable, we define a global variable. But we want to create a ongoing list of output from both of our lists together. So we're going to create something called a local variable that only has life or scope within the output list procedure. So I'm going to go into variables and I'm going to initialize a local variable and I'm going to call it output. This is the output that we want to place on the screen. And the output on the screen will start off as nothing and over time we're going to develop an ongoing list of output and then we will put that output on the screen in LBL notes output. So I'm going to grab my getter and eventually output will have something defined for it but right now it does not and actually I'm going to have to put that in there. All right, continuing on. So what I need to do now is I need to loop through my list, grab a time, grab a note, combine them together, and then add that to the output that I want to put on the screen. So here's what we're going to have to do we're going to review what it means to do a loop. 
I want to loop through every single index in my list. So, as long as my list isn't empty, I'm going to create some output. And for every, I'm just going to call this index in my list, index numbers start at 1, I need to go through the length of the entire list, so I'm going to delete that block. It doesn't matter which list I use, so I'm just going to grab the length of the notes list. So I'm going to look and grab the length of the notes list. All right, and each time I'm going to increment or increase my index by one. So this means I'm going to start at the first item. After I read the first note, I'm going to move on to the second note and the second time, and then I'm going to move on to the third note and the third time until I reach the length of the list. And this is where the loop stops once it reaches the end. So what do I do each time I am proceeding through the list? Well, I want to change the output. So I'm going to set my output. So I'm going to grab a setter. And the setter is going to develop over time. So I'm going to take my previous output, so I'm going to get my output that I had before, right, and I'm going to add on to it. And how do you add on to strings? Well, you join them. So I'm going to grab a joiner. I'm going to pop this in here. And I'm going to take my old output, and I'm going to add on the new output. Well, what does the old output consist of? Right now, the output is nothing. So I'm joining nothing with something else. So the, the new output will be the new note and the new time. So I need to select the current note. So the current note is in a list. So I'm going to select an item in the list. Which list? The notes list. So I'm just going to duplicate. And I'm going to grab the current index. Well, the current index is called the index, so I'm just going to grab my index. Great. And so it says set the output to join the old output plus the current note at the current position. And now I need to add the time to that. So I'm going to join and add some more join strings. In fact, I'm going to join two more, so I'm going to drag two more blocks in here. Uh, great. So I want you to go away. I'll click away. There we go. So now I want to separate the current note from the current time. So in order to do that, I need to add some text. And I want to separate the note from the time with a tab. Now, before to get to a new line, we use backslash n. To get to a new time, we're going to use a backslash t, which means a tab. And I'm going to throw a couple of tabs in there. So that's a backslash t, backslash t. And now I can get the time. So I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to get the times, okay, and just, oops, didn't mean to do that. It looks like I've got something under here that I want to just move down so I don't lose that. Great. And now I need to go to a new line. So I've got the old output, the current note separated by two tabs, then the current time that's stored in the times list at the same position. And now I'm going to add one more joiner with a string to move to a new line. So I'm going to copy this block. I'm going to pop it into the end. And instead of two backslash t's, I'm going to add a backslash n. So we've covered the case if the list is not empty. 
But if the list is empty, we need to clear out any data in the on the screen that used to be showing but is no longer in the computer's memory. So we just need to clear out the text box. So I'm going to duplicate this. And right at the top of our procedure, I am just going to pull this block out. And I'm going to just empty out any output so that if the list happened to be empty, we also clear out the notes right here. If there happened to be something there from before, we just clear that out to make sure that it's accurate. So I'm going to duplicate my empty string block. And now I think we're ready to test this app. So I'm going to pull over my emulator again. And I'm going to type in uh, cut the grass and add that note. And there's the time showing up. And this is the emulator's time. It's not my actual time. So it's not quite as accurate, but it gives you the same idea as it would be in reality. And then I will say grade papers. I'll add that note, and I'll add a third one, uh, create lesson plans. And I'll add that note, and then I'm going to test my removal process. And as I remove grade papers, it's gone. Let me try removing cut the grass, it's gone. Let me try removing lesson plans. It's gone. It cleared this box out. This is disabled. Let me add a note back, which could be something like plant the garden. And add note. It seems to be working. Perfect. So the very final thing I'd like to do is change the designer slightly. We may have completed everything on our list, and instead of deleting them one by one, it would be really nice if we had a feature to clear every note that is currently showing and stored in the database. So that's what we're going to do. And to do that, we need to change our interface by adding a button. So I'm going to drag a button and I'm going to drag it in right under Remove Note, and I'm going to change its name to rename it to be, how about BTN Clear All. Okay, and I'm going to say OK, and it looks like my emulator is having a little bit of an issue there. So there's my button. Let's put some text on it. For text on this button, I'm going to say clear all notes. And I'm going to make this width to fill the parents. And I'm going to make the text color red. And I don't know why my emulator is having a little bit of an issue there, but let me cancel that out. Okay, so and I think we're ready to go. I'm going to actually bold that so it stands out just a little bit. So we will be able to clear all notes. So what does it mean to clear all the notes? Well, we want to clear both of our lists. We're going to need to clear uh, both of our lists, clear out the database, clear out the notes text uh, label, and just make that remove button be false because there's no more data left. So I'm going to put that code right down here at the bottom of the code blocks. All right, so here we go. Let's add a click procedure. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear each of our lists. So, so first I'm going to clear out my list. So I'm going to end up creating an empty list. And I'm going to do that by setting my global notes to an empty list. I'm going to duplicate that. 
and set my times to an empty list. I now need to clear out my tiny database. So I'm going to go to tiny database one and I'm going to look for the clear all option. Okay. I need to also come to the designer view. I need to clear out any notes that might be showing. So let's go to that label. And where is it? Right here. And let's set that label's text. Uh, notes output. And we'll change its text to an empty set of quotes. And finally, we need to disable the remove button. So over here I have that code, so I'll duplicate that. And since there aren't any notes, I don't want to be able to remove anything. So I will just set the remove button to be disabled. And that should be all of the code we need. I'm just going to restart my emulator since it was having issues and test it and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm ready to test this. So I'm going to go for a walk. Adding. I'm going to make lunch. Adding. I'm going to go biking. Adding. Great. Ready to remove a note. Make lunch. That seems to work. I'm going to remove biking. That seems to work. I'm going to add a new note. Mow lawn. Great. I'm going to clear all notes. Remove note. Everything's working. One In our final revision of this app, I noticed while testing that our initialize procedure needs just a little bit of revision. So I want you to take a look at this and see what we're missing. When we load this app into memory, we're missing some data, and it's right here. We got the global notes, but we never retrieved back the timestamps that were saved in the database. So I'm going to duplicate this, and then I'm going to switch over to the times, and I'm going to grab the global times that were saved under the tag times in the database. All right, and with that, we should be good to go on this app.